Snake AI. Let's do it. Chik -chik. A journey of 1000 miles begins with a single step. In our case, it begins with an empty window. And as always, we're using SFML for graphics. Yep, that's some fine looking window. First, we need to make the game itself before working on the AI. So, we need to draw a grid. Some people like drawing vertical and horizontal lines. But I like to draw a bunch of squares instead. Because it's easier and more efficient. Thankfully, SFML provides us with a rectangle shape class so we don't have to work with sprites and textures. Alright, let's add the snake. Here's the snake class. For now, it's not doing anything other than existing. I also made a two-dimensional array that will store the map. If we were making the game itself, we wouldn't need the map. But since we're gonna work on the AI, and I'm planning to do something later that involves using the map, we definitely need it. Every cell can either be empty or have a snake body. And here's our snake. It's just a square, so are you. Okay, in order to move the snake, we're gonna need directions. And we also need controls. We're gonna move the snake once every certain number of frames. By the way, we should give him a name. I'm gonna call you James. Alright James, show us what you got. That's not what I meant, stop, stop. I forgot to clear the map before updating it. There we go. If you've ever played Snake, you know that when the snake is moving in one direction, it cannot turn 180 degrees and immediately start moving in the opposite direction. We need to turn 90 degrees, take a step, then turn another 90 degrees. But for some reason, James doesn't need to do that. Because James doesn't play by your stupid rules. Well, let's fix that. Before we change the direction, we're gonna check to see if James is not moving in the opposite direction. I also added this variable to make sure we don't change the direction until we take at least one step. And now it's fixed. As much as I hate to admit it, one cell is not enough for James to be considered a snake. So let's make him grow. For that I made a vector of positions. The first element in that vector is gonna be the snake's head. And the last element is gonna be its tail. When we wanna move the snake, we're gonna start from the tail. We move the tail to the position of the body before it. Then we move that body to the position of the body before it and so on until we reach the head. Once we reach the head, we're gonna move it based on the current direction of the snake. Since we haven't added any food for the snake, we're gonna press the spacebar for the snake to grow. I wish I had that button. Anyway, as you can see James is growing and moving. Now in order to add food to our game, we need to use random number generators. We're not gonna use rand because only little boys use rand, while real men like us use the random library. So I made a class for random number generation to make the process easier. And here's the function that adds food to the map. First we check to see if there's at least one empty cell on the map. If so, we start randomly picking the cells until we come across an empty cell. Then we put food in that cell. If a cell contains both the body of the snake and food, we're gonna remove food from that cell and add new food on the map. And now James can perform one of the basic biological activities which is eating. Do you know what's the other biological activity? Death. If the snake goes outside the map, it'll die. If the snake hits itself, it'll die. If the snake doesn't subscribe to my channel, it'll- Hey! That's enough. Here's how it looks in the code. Alright, the game is finished. Now we can start working on the AI. But first I wanna see what will happen if the snake just randomly changes its direction. Come on James, you can do it. Oh yeah. Oh my god, second tail. Another one! James, I love you! One more, James, one more! Screw you, James. Well, that was fun. Now let's work on the actual AI. For the AI to work, it needs some inputs. There will be a total of 16 inputs. The first 8 inputs are for the food. We're gonna start from the head of the snake and look in 8 directions. Once we see a cell with food, we're gonna get the distance to that cell and put it in our array of inputs. If there is no food, the input will be 0. The next 8 inputs are for the things that the snake should avoid. It can be its own body or the border of the map. These inputs are calculated the same way as the food inputs. The code is super simple so I'm not gonna explain it to you. To make sure we're calculating the inputs correctly, I wrote this temporary code that'll visualize the inputs. And it seems to be working just fine. Okay, now the snake needs to use those inputs to make correct decisions. And for that, we're gonna use the neural networks. Ooh. This type of neural network is called a multilayer perceptron. It has at least two layers, three in this case. The first layer is called the input layer, the last layer is called the output layer, and layers in between are called hidden layers. Each layer consists of some number of neurons. 
and each neuron is connected to all the neurons in the next layer. We start by putting all of our inputs in the input layer. Then we calculate the values of the neurons in the next layer. Let's start with this one. We multiply the inputs by the weights of the connections that are connected to this neuron. Then we add them all up and put the sum in this neuron. We do the same thing to other neurons until we reach the output layer. So by changing the weights of the connections, we can change the output. The output layer will have 4 neurons for each direction in which the snake can move. And to make sure that the values of the neurons don't go stupidly large, we're gonna use an activation function. Since we only want values between 0 and 1, we need to use an activation function that will shrink any number in that range. Most people would use the sigmoid function for this case. But since I'm a crazy idiot who likes to do everything by himself, I'm gonna write my own function. Here's the formula. I made a whole video about neural networks where I explain how they work in detail. I took the forward propagation code from that video as well. Okay, let's see how the neural network will perform. Let's try again. You know, the random movement was a lot better. Let's try increasing the number of snakes. Alright, there are 1000 snakes. At least one of them should be smart, right? Ooh, AI will take over the world, be careful, they can't even play snake. Obviously, we need to train them to play correctly. And for that, we're gonna use the genetic algorithm. How does it work? Every snake will have a fitness value. That value determines how well the snake has performed. If it's high, we want more snakes like him. If it's low, we want snakes like him to go extinct. Yeah, I know that's cruel, but bear with me. After we run a generation and all the snakes die, we're gonna pick two snakes with the highest fitness value. They're gonna be the parents of the next generation's snakes. We're gonna combine their weights using the uniform crossover. Here's how it works. Let's imagine these are the weights of the first parent snake, these are the weights of the second parent snake, and these are the weights of the new snake. We're gonna randomly choose the weight of either the first or the second parent and assign it to the new snake. Then we repeat the same thing for the other weights. And to make sure we don't keep using the same values for the weights, we're gonna randomly assign new values for some weights. This process is called mutation. Instead of adding new snakes with new weights, we're gonna change the weights of every snake except for the parent snakes. And when it comes to calculating the fitness value, we're gonna increase it by 1 every time we eat food. I also did a food timer so that when the snake doesn't eat food for a long time, it'll die. Alright, let's see the genetic algorithm in action. In the beginning, they all suck. But after 100 generations, they still suck. At first I thought it was because the inputs were too large since we're counting the distance in cells. So I normalized the inputs by dividing them by the map size. It slightly improved the snakes but they still sucked. Then I thought, maybe it's because my activation function is bad. So I removed it completely. And surprisingly, they became a lot smarter. To be honest, I was hurt. But it doesn't matter. It works, so we're happy. Even though they became smarter, that was still not enough for me. I tried changing the way we calculate the fitness value, adding more snakes, adding wrapping around the border, but none of those solutions worked. Until I tried one thing. The most fearless, dangerous thing that completely changed not only this project but the whole universe. He changed the inputs. Oh come on! Okay, the first thing I changed is that now inputs are calculated relative to the current direction of the snake. I also changed the output layer so now we have three outputs. The first one is for turning 90 degrees counterclockwise. The second one is for not changing the direction. And the third one is for turning 90 degrees clockwise. Now when it comes to calculating the inputs, we now have 8 inputs instead of 16. Our inputs will be calculated based on the distance value. If, for example, the first thing we see is food, the input value will be higher the closer it is and vice versa. If the first thing we see is the thing that we should avoid, we do the exact same thing except we multiply the result by negative 1. Enough with the nerdy stuff. Let's see it in action. 100 points. 200 points. 300 points. 400. Damn, James, you got mad skills. And just so you know, that's not even the 20th generation. Now we have an AI that can play Snake. So, is that it? Hell no. Now I want to make the evolution continuous. For that we just need to remove the generations completely and respawn the snakes with new weights immediately after they die. Okay, continuous evolution, here we go! After over 10,000 snakes have died, the record score is 51 and the average length is about 5.
It's mainly because they keep trying to go through themselves through each other. Because when I let them go through each other, they kept growing like memory usage when I try to use pointers. The last thing I wanna add is the ability for the snakes to eat each other when they die. Now I know that sounds messed up, but it's not as bad as you may think. When we're updating the map, we're gonna put food on the cells where the snake is currently standing if it's dead. Let's see what will happen. Well, the good news is they don't have to worry about food anymore. The fix is we just need to stop food from reappearing when it's eaten. I'm pretty sure it's fixed, but let's see. In the beginning, they behaved normally. Then they started dying in one place. And that place kept growing with food. Until eventually... The game crashed. That was a good biology lesson, don't you think? And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. The Snake AI Battle Royale. For this battle, we need to gather 100 smartest, strongest, and fastest snakes. We're gonna run the genetic algorithm for 50 generations. Why 50, you may ask? It's because an average snake stops evolving before the 50th generation, so I don't see the point of doing more. As soon as all the snakes die on the 50th generation, we're gonna save the weights of the snake with the highest fitness value in the TXT file. And after repeating this process 100 times, we end up with this. Here's how they look like on the inside if you're curious. Now we need to somehow put them in our code. We can do it the smart way, or we can do it like this. Yep, that's a switch statement with 100 cases. I also want snakes to have different colors so we can easily tell them apart. Every cell will store the ID of the snake, and we're gonna color those cells based on that ID. We're gonna use the HSV color model because using RGB here will lead to anger management issues. Since we're only interested in hue, we're gonna assume that saturation and value are always one. And here's the function that converts HSV colors into RGB colors that I wrote entirely by myself without using any help like Stack Overflow. Alright, there are 100 snakes here, but only one of them is gonna be the winner. Now is the perfect time to place your bets. I'm gonna bet on this guy. He looks like James. 3, 2, 1, let's go! Okay, my snake is already dead. Just like most of the snakes here. Let's speed things up. This is so intense. They kept growing or dying depending on how smart they are, until eventually, we were left with two snakes. These two showed everyone that they're the best of the best, but there can be only one winner. Who's it gonna be? Maybe it's the yellow-green Peter, who saw the harsh realities of the genetic algorithm. Or maybe it's the dirty orange Daniel, whose traumatic mutation caused him to appreciate life more. Let's find out. Okay, they don't seem to be engaging with- oh, oh, wait, wait. Ooh, that was close. It seems like they're waiting for the perfect moment to kill each other. Oh no, Daniel put himself in a trap. Can he escape though? He escaped! What a save. Oh, it looks like Peter is losing control. And... Peter is gone! Which makes Daniel the winner of this battle. And here's the leaderboard. As you may notice, some snakes scored more points than others, but rank lower on the leaderboard. I just assume that the players place in battle royal games depends on how long they survive on the battlefield. Maybe I'm wrong since I'm not a gamer and I don't play these types of games. Let me know in the comments what place your snake got. Big thanks to all of my awesome Patreon supporters, especially Richie Speckner and Victor Fernandez. Don't forget to join our Discord server. Like, subscribe, and make sure to...